What's up fellow Sambarians? So I was going to do a little how-to on timing your truck. If you saw my last video, uh, kind of going over possible solutions to fixing your carbureted sandbar, um, I mentioned something about timing. And I had made a video, but I deleted it because I wasn't exactly sure if I was doing it correctly. But now that I am 100% sure that I'm doing it correctly, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do it. Uh, obviously, this is only on carbureted sandbars only because the fuel injected ones, uh, it has the computer and so it, it will advance and retard the uh, timing automatically. But uh, these ones do not. So, I did some research because I wanted to figure out if I had said something correct in the last one about timing, but I gave you guys some fake news. Um, if you advance your timing, it gives you a little, it gives you more power on the high end, and that's what we want is more power on the high end because we're going, we're going faster. We're trying to go faster. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with, <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with traffic around here. Especially going up hills when you got, you know, semis tailgating you because they're going faster than you. So I don't need the low end power, uh, which is why you would retard your timing. So we're going to advance it back to 14 degrees bottom top dead center because the manual says to set it at 6 degrees bottom top dead center. And we're going to put it back to where it was prior to me messing with the timing when, if you saw my last video, trying to figure out what the heck was going on with my truck. So, now that I know that I'm gonna do it correctly, I'm gonna show you guys how to time your carbureted sandbar. I've shot this so many times, I forget what I said in the last five seconds. So, we're gonna do the timing on both my sandbars because they're both set at six degrees and I want that high-end power because I'm not worried about the low-end power. Um, so, uh, what you're gonna need Obviously, it is a uh, timing light, a timing gun, um, and it's going to have the clip that goes on uh, your spark clip wire on cylinder one, and it's got an arrow on it, at least this one does, and it tells you, you know, which way to turn the clip, um, and it comes, and you got the little power uh, changes here, so I'm going to hook it up to a jumper box, so that's fine. If you don't have a manual, that's cool. Um, I'm gonna tell you everything that the manual has to say right here. Uh, you're gonna need a, a 10 mil to turn the uh, distributor. Loosen it, turn the distributor. And you're gonna need this sweet freaking oil catch can because it's gonna add horsepower. I'm just kidding, that's, a, that's another day. Video for another day. Just got two more stuff going on. We're just one day at a time. So let's get behind the truck and start doing some timing. As far as getting a timing light goes, uh, I'm not sure how expensive they are. I've had this one I got from my dad a million years ago and he's had it for a million years, I'm sure. So maybe ask your your peepaw or your mima if she's got a timing light sitting around. Uh, it's cold. Um, so, and that's another thing. We need to make sure that our car, uh, sandbars are completely warmed up um, at normal operating temperature. So this thing's been sitting running for like 20, 30 minutes. So I'm gonna fire it back up again and we're gonna see where we're sitting on the marks and I'm gonna attempt to show you where it's at. It's really hard to get the camera in there, but I'll do my best. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and see what we're sitting at. I mean, I just timed it the other day. So I should be sitting at 600, I mean, uh, six degrees advanced. Let's put the clip on the spark plug wire. So you put that on your number one cylinder. And let's see if we can even get this to show on the camera. Yeah, uh, let's see, that's kind of in the way. Yeah, let's see, maybe we can do Well, you 
you can kind of see the marks right there flicking. It's freaking my camera out. But it's on the bottom one right there. So that is the six degrees uh, advanced bottom top dead center. So we're going to go ahead and advance it to the 14 degree mark, which is the top one. Okay, so now we're going to uh, loosen the two 10 mils on the end of the distributor. And uh, be, be careful when you're doing this because on the last one I had the cap would zap me. Kind of hurt. Okay, so the distributor is loosened up. Now we're going to go back, check the light, and then we're going to turn the distributor as we check to see where we're sitting on the marks. careful when you're turning it very very slight turning slight movement so I am sitting just a little bit below the top mark but I'm gonna say that's kind of safe I don't want to advance it too much because I think we could cause damage so I'm gonna uh, take that off just make sure because you're supposed to plug the advance vacuum advance but I don't it doesn't really do anything it doesn't change if you plug it and we're still sitting at the just at the top mark Go ahead and tighten those bolts back up. It is aluminum there, so don't crank on those bolts too tight. You definitely don't want to strip those. Um, I'm just going to double check it again. Yeah, let me see if I can uh, film it. So you can kind of see I'm at the top mark there. So that's 14 degrees there. So I just kind of want to show you this real quick. Uh, how the book is saying it needs to be timed is six degrees with a RPM of 800. So uh, here's a good picture. AC, non-AC, they're same uh, where the timing marks are. You got your 14 degree and your 10 degree and then your six degree and then your top dead center. So I had it set to six degrees and now I just advanced it to 14 degrees um so so yeah i mean the, the the book basically is everything i just told you except remove and plug vacuum hose so i think that's just to uh, make sure it doesn't freak it out with a vacuum leak when you take that off the vacuum advance okay so we're all timed timed in the back now let's check our uh, idle So I'm idling at normal operating temperatures, um, just a little, just at a thousand. So I'm sitting just, just at a thousand there. 
Okay, so since we're idling a little high, uh, you'll see if you have your plastic cover still here, um, there's a hole in it. There's a, a screw down in there, and that's going to adjust your idle. So if you turn it clockwise, it's going to uh, raise the RPMs. Uh, if you rotate it counterclockwise, it lowers your RPMs. Now here's the deal, when you're lowering it, you just want to turn it a little bit and let it sit because it could take up to like five minutes before it um, actually registers because uh, it, it's got to, you know, settle down or something, I don't know. So we're going to turn it down just a little bit. So you can kind of hear it drop. I'm going to check. And also what I did was I turned the uh, headlights on to put a little drag on the alternator because I, I, I don't want this thing to stall out. So right now uh, I'm sitting at, you know, 900 RPMs, which is perfect. I'll go with it because it's either uh, 800 plus or minus 50. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with 900 uh, RPM sitting at idle, um, advanced 14 degrees. We'll see if we... Uh, gain any power going up the hills tomorrow um, when we take it out but super easy to do timing i was afraid at first because it's just like oh you know i don't want to mess mess anything up but you literally can't i mean <laughs> don't quote me but as long as you let's say you're afraid you're gonna mess something up put a mark on your distributor and where it's sitting so if you know you think you screwed it up you can put it back to exactly where it was before and don't mess with your idle adjustment screw if you know you're concerned about doing that but i mean if you just do little increments and kind of just remember where it was prior to messing with it you'll be fine i mean just don't obviously crank on that distributor um to to advance it or retard it because you could possibly damage the engine maybe by doing it too much so just little increments at a time and just kind of get a get a feel for it see if she sounds good running better or whatever um but yeah i'm happy with it um and again super easy to do timing and also i think i'm gonna do in a in a video coming up i'm gonna talk about more about the wheels and tires um, on my trucks and my van uh, surprisingly I've gotten quite a few messages not surprisingly but I've gotten quite a few messages about wheels and tires um, what I'm running and maybe I can kind of explain uh, some stuff that I know and what what I'm using and what fits and um, yeah just maybe some info on that I kind of did a video if you go back about buying wheels um from 500 yen but i didn't really talk about you know what what's a good fit but yeah maybe i'll do that next um but cool hopefully that was helpful and you can just kind of check i mean checking timing is a maintenance thing so just check your timing and see where you're sitting and and that's a good indicator if your stuff is really erratic uh, then there's something wrong because it should be very steady. So it could be spark plug, spark plug wires, cap, cap and cap and rotor, uh, something along those lines, which I have all those parts. So if something's wonky, um, check out my parts store. But yeah, cool. Take it easy, guys. Uh, on to the, see you on the next one. Hi patitos. Hi guys. Snowflake. Lake tired. You're the prettiest patitos. Alright. <laughs>